from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Room, how you guys living, man? How y'all live? Living. Uh, hold on. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let me make sure this thing. Sorry about that, guys. Let me turn my microphone down and let me start recording. <clears throat> Excuse me. How y'all doing, man? How is the family doing? I ain't been on in a couple of days, but I'm here now. I'm here now. I have not been on in a couple of days. Just putting the finishing touches on the film microphone check that's coming in a couple of months, going to be in theaters all over the country. So we're getting ready for that big rollout. We're about to hit the paint real hard with microphone check. We're just putting all the bells and whistles on it. This is going to be a phenomenal film. It's going to shake up the table. Um, everybody's going to be talking about this film this year, and that's going to be out in a couple of months. And I will let you guys know when the screenings around the world, around the country first, and then around the world, because we are going to take it um, internationally, because hip hop is an international foundational Black American culture and art form that's appreciated worldwide. So the world is going to be on this. And we're finally telling the story of hip hop from our perspective. So I'm very proud of the film. I'm very proud of everybody who's involved and who um, contributed to the making of the film, man. This is a great historic piece. Oh uh, man, a lot of stuff we're gonna touch on in a second, guys. Just waiting on everybody to pile on in the room. Um, what's up, Nikki the God, brother Sir Major in the building. I see y'all in here. Um, let's let's jump right into it. We got enough folks in here. We almost got 200 people right away. And then I'm going to get calls from the family. Um, did y'all see the clip of Ilhan Omar? People are really getting off in her bumper right now. Ilhan Omar, she did a, uh, there was a speech she did and they translated it. And she was talking about, <clears throat> she's Somali, Somalian first and a Muslim second and whoop de whoop. So that kind of rubbed people the wrong way. You're a Somalian first. And there's another clip, um, that people may or may not have seen while I'm talking. I'm going to see if I can pull it up um, where she kind of catches herself talking about Somalia. She was like, yeah, my country, I mean, um, the country of Somalia, she said something to that effect. She kind of caught herself. And I'm trying to see if I could find that real quickly while I'm talking to the family because I want to play that and um, I always get these weird technical difficulties when I'm trying to do stuff. Let me try to find that clip of her saying that. That was very interesting. Hold on one second. One second. Let me see if I could find it on my other computer and then play that. Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, um she caught herself. Yeah, this is it right here. Now listen to this. She kind of caught herself when she was talking about Somalia. My country, oh, the, the country I came from. She caught herself real quickly. Listen to this if you can hear it. Hold on, hold on. Since the first day this president introduced the Muslim ban, knowing that my the country I came from, knowing that my the country I came from, knowing that my the country I came from. Did y'all hear that? Did that come in clear? Did that come in clear, guys? Give me a thumbs up if y'all could hear that. So she called herself. Because look, look, let's be real. This is why there's been a major delineation movement. Because 
you got these folks who have brown skin and we sat here and elected people and elevated them. But these people have dual allegiances. They have dual allegiances. And that's problematic. And we wonder why we got these brown faces up in office that we're we're like, damn, they're black like me. And we can never get anything done on our end. Because these are the people who we put up. We elect them thinking that we have a camaraderie with our brown skin and the people from her homeland who lives in Minnesota, they get broken off and they don't get the stigma of their criminality up there in Minnesota. You got all of them um, Somali gangs up there and they doing God knows what. And that stigma, <clears throat> when they do something negative, it falls back on us. But this is the reason why there's massive delineation movement because we know these folks have dual allegiances. They don't have an allegiance to us or this country or anything. And it's all about them and getting theirs. And we're sitting here thinking that there's going to be this big global hand holding ceremony where we're all going to lift each other up. Ain't nobody really trying to lift us up except us. Jabola, <clears throat> you want to hop on, bro? Yeah, nobody's trying to lift up anything. It's us doing the heavy lifting. And that's what it's always been about. And this is why when we're talking about getting reparations, some of these main people are the main ones trying to undermine it and talk against it. Jabola, did you want to get on or you want to just come up here and let your hairline be seen? All right. Well, Jabola, this is your last time coming up. This guy requests to get on and he never says anything. So I'm going to block you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're not going to do that again. We just cut that off. Um, speaking of reparations family, do y'all notice all of these reparations conferences popping up now? I've seen about three or four of them. That's coming up because we've been talking about possibly getting something going on in June, which we're, we're really etching towards the green on that because I'm seeing all this stuff going on. Now it's like we got to do it at this point, right? Because what they're going to do now, they're going to start flooding the zone because they know that reparations is in the lexicon of the country. That's in the air. They know that. We, on the grassroots, millions of us are on the reparations wave. They can't shake it. They can't do anything about it. So what they want to do is try to deflect and control the narrative. They see that this is what we're talking about. All of the student loan debt and all of this other stuff, that ain't working. They can't do the minority coalition. That ain't working. You got black people. Um, in Chicago, still complaining about the, the immigrants flooding and the migrants coming in and all of these different places. That, that's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. So they see where we are on the grassroots. So now they're trying to create some controlled opposition because I'm looking at some of these quote unquote reparations conferences they got going on. And let me tell y'all the key words y'all need to look for. Y'all, when you see in Cobra, thumbs down. I'm seeing some of these joints and I'm looking at some of the people in the names and in Cobra and whoop de whoop and got one. It's going to be Caracom there. That's the, the Caribbean. So what, what are they in this conversation for about reparations? They got Caracom. We're not included in Caracom. <clears throat> We're not included in Caracom. For those who don't know, that's the Caribbean um, Federation. All of the Caribbean nations are, they formed a coalition to get, um, compensation or reparations from France, Britain, Spain, and some of the other European colonialists. For Caribbeans, they don't include us. We're not included in that. And that's fine. Knock yourself out. But one of the, the heads of CARICOM, y'all remember, she was over here talking about when we get reparations, they need to get reparations too. I'm like, so how the hell does that work? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We're not doing all that stuff. 
So I don't know why CARICOM is jumping into our reparations conversation when they we, they don't include us. So we got to be very strict with the gatekeeping family. This don't don't turn this into a, a we are the world type of thing. We got to be very very direct with who this reparations thing is for. And people need to support that and pop their collar to it. Don't try to latch on to it. But I'm looking at all of these reparations conferences and it looks like a lot of controlled opposition. So they're going to try to get that reparations energy energy and try to divert it. That's what it's looking like. And shout out to Black Alpha. I saw my man was um, chopping it up with Cornell West and he was shutting down a lot of that All Lives Matter talk. Everybody shout out our brother all Black Alpha. <clears throat> if we do something in D.C., Black Alpha, you got to come on through. We got to get you on the stage. Y'all let me know who we need to um, bring up there to be keynote speakers. We need to really start getting the seeds planted now. <clears throat> Excuse me. We need to start getting the seeds planted now because we got to go. If we go back to D.C. and we're planning on doing it in June, we got to go in heavy. And um, <clears throat> we're getting everything together. Again, it's not a green light yet, but we're we're working on some things because um looks like we really need to go on out there, man, and really get this thing going and really do it from a for real grassroots perspective. Because we don't want nobody to piss on this reparations energy because they're trying to do that right now, especially because this is an election season. They're really trying to dissipate that energy. And also, man, because we're talking about reparations, there's a lot of veiled threats that being levied at us um, directly and indirectly. We see a lot of vandalisms of um, black institutions and black iconic figures um, in L.A., there was a lot of vandalism of um, black cemeteries, um, black iconic structures. Our museum, the Hidden History Museum, which is one of the most preeminent black institutions out here, um, we've been targeted with vandalism repeatedly. Um, some black owned businesses all up and down California getting targeted. Um, down in Memphis or somewhere in Tennessee, the Underground Railroad Museum, they, they tried to burn that down a couple of weeks ago um, out there. I want to say St. Louis, right? They um, Somebody stole the um, Jackie Robinson statue and, and burned it to rubble. So and, and I see on, on some of these white supremacist websites, the, the white supremacists are kind of celebrating. So this is organized. Most likely the cops were involved. Let me tell you something. You don't steal no damn statue. And with all of the cameras all over the place and they don't know what happened. When, anytime we get vandalized, all of a sudden, no cameras don't work for nothing. When we get vandalized, ain't no cameras nowhere. Don't nobody have no camera. They ain't got no footage. They don't know who the suspects are. But if a black person commits a crime, boy, they got every angle of it in 4K. When that situation with agents, he didn't even commit a crime. He he got punched on by a white woman and she was chasing him down the street. And they had multiple angles of him interacting with that white woman. They had satellite footage, um, store footage, subway footage. They had all types of footage and angles of that dude. So yeah, they, they know how to get evidence when it's convenient. So again, these iconic structures being targeted, that's not that's not a coincidence. That's by design. And people are trying to kind of intimidate us to not talk about reparations. They're trying to intimidate us with their little veiled threats. I saw uh, a clip of um, some mayor. He's some mayor in California. And I wish I had the clip on me. I should have. I probably put it on my broadcast tomorrow. He was talking about reparations out here in California because we were out here in California stomping heavy for reparations. And he was like, well, oh, I'm, I'm against reparations. I think reparations is divisive. Um, I think that reparations would cause a lot of hatred and that's going to cause a lot of violence towards black people. We already got hatred towards us. 
We already got resentment. There's already violence to it. Those are not good threats no more. You already doing it and we ain't getting nothing. That's why we have the nothing to lose mentality. We ain't got nothing to lose. You are you guys have thrown everything at us. We're sitting up here not getting anything and getting slaughtered. So we might as well get everything that we're supposed to get. That's the mentality now. We can't go nowhere but up. You can't threaten us no more. That's not going to work. You're already doing the violence. And there was a troll space. I, I hopped in a troll space the other day with a bunch of wannabe white supremacists. Um, they were saying just some real weird stuff about black folks. But it was it, a lot of the people were using these white supremacist talking points. And the people all had these accents. You can tell they weren't Anglo white people. Many of them were Middle Eastern, Hispanic. And that's your coalition right there. These people get behind closed doors. And when you, they, they know you can't see them, they start spewing all of the anti-black rhetoric sounding like the same white supremacists on 4chan. I just um, retweeted a damn African dude making a threat to me. Did y'all see the tweet earlier? Some some African dude, he says he's in South Africa. He was like, hey, nigga, you better not set foot in Africa no more. <laughs> like, like it's Captain Phillips. Nigga's all dramatic. You FBA nigga, don't ever set your foot back in Africa again. <laughs> like, nigga, how are you going to do anything? How are you going to do something? Like, if you come to Africa, you have to deal with me, nigga. Like you, how are you going to try to scrap with somebody and you got malaria, nigga? You can't do nothing. That's you. Y'all not scary gangsters. The, the thugging ain't scary from you guys. It just, it's not scary. Y'all please stop making threats. It, 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 it don't hit, man. It just really don't hit. I, I'm not convinced, brother. You, you, you're not the, you, you, I'm a, a 103 pound nigga with a big forehead taking a swing on me. That, that ain't going to work. That's not going to work. I'm knocking all the flies off your scalp. That's not going to work, son. That's you, you save that threat for somebody else. That yeah, I'm not convinced. What, you going to throw some hot bush meat at me? Now, that might scare me. Now, <laughs> yeah, if you're sick of hyena on me or some shit, now you might know if you got something like that. Now, I might be a little cautious, but. Yeah, ain't nobody toe to toe whooping my ass. I am never getting my ass whooped by a nigga in musty flip flops. That's never going to happen. So y'all can stop with them damn threats. Oh, man. We got a lot of people in here. Let's get some folks in here. <clears throat> Let's get Dolo in here. Let's get Mr. Dolo in here. Dolo, hop on. Mr. Dolo, hop on, sir. Now. What's going on, Dolo? You got to roll your window up or take your AirPods off. Very loud. Oh, shit. My fault. My fault. I took the AirPods off. I'm in a truck right now. I just had a quick question, and I'm going to mute up for you. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I, you know, I have a typical you know, grandfather, Democratic. I was just thinking of what type of approach would you have if you're, you know, trying to be respectful to your, your elder? Okay, but I, I, I can't. The, the sound is just too bad, brother. I call back a little later let's get sir major in let's let's get your phones together family i don't want to struggle to hear <laughs> what's going on mr major what's up brother Trick? how you feeling i'm good i'm good hey man i appreciate you calling out uh the ilhan omar situation we're going to be leading uh the fba family is leading a a charge uh with members of congress to get her actually um expelled from congress so we'll be leading that charge on tomorrow um, I did want to get your thoughts. I know we previously talked about um, the former First Lady Michelle Obama uh, running for office. Uh, industry yeah. insiders and uh, political insiders are saying that around May, okay, uh, Biden is supposed to pretend to be sick uh, and then move oh. her into office uh, and move her into play at the DNC to have her be the face for the uh, for the DNC. So that that is. What's being said now, this is coming from the top. There's a lot of insiders. And I remember 
uh, Mark Carter telling me this uh, a while back, maybe about last month, and I didn't believe it, but it is coming to be true, according to a lot of insiders, that around May, when the DNC, um, you know, really starts to uh, ramp up uh, stuff, it's going to be Michelle Obama. Your thoughts? That's interesting. Yeah, they're going to have to do some kind of Hail Mary thing. Biden, Biden is done. Biden's numbers are so crappy right now. There's no way Biden is going to win. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And I've been hearing the little rumors about them throwing Michelle Obama. That's the only thing that would kind of spark any type of interest in the Democrats. They would have to do something very gimmicky. It would be it would be very gimmicky. But here's the thing. The gimmick is only going to work on a very small amount of people. It's going to get a lot of headlines and they're going to black it up. All oh, black woman, black woman, black woman, black woman. If, if that happens. But too many of us on the grassroots, we remember her damn husband not doing a damn thing. and We realize she ain't going to do anything either. You understand? We already know. We already know what the deal is and we're not going for the the okie doke. We're not going for it. Um, let's little bam. Hop on, man. Wow, what's up, Tariq? Peace of love to you. I appreciate a lot of the material that you put out. And um, I can speak to you about a lot, but I feel like this year is important going forward. I wanted to know your thoughts on how uh, us as a community can use our voice in terms of voting. You know, I'm not too sure about who I would like to vote for as president and the options available. And I wanted to know your thoughts on Trump. Uh, I feel like uh, there's a lot of conservative views that we can hold as a community that are good for our cause. I'm not saying Republicans are all for us, but uh, there's not many good ones to choose from. And uh, I'm just thinking about you know, what I want to vote for Trump. And it seems like that's what I would do because it might be best, you know, in particular in regards to my community for someone like that to be voted in. You know, I might not agree with everything that he stands for, but um, I'm just trying to think what's best for my children and future generations sake. Um, now, a little bit. Now, a little yeah. bit. Where are you from? Because you kind of um, have a slight accent. Where are you from? Where are you yeah, from? I'm sure you would catch the Tariq, uh, my southern accent. I'm in California right now, and I would love to visit your museum. Uh, to give you a little background, my, both my parents are from uh, Philadelphia, and my grandfather he was a Buffalo soldier. So uh, I do consider myself a foundational Black American. You know, I try to get my family. Uh, kind of on code in regards to that, um, you know, but yeah. So if, who's, or what immigrants in your family? I swear I hear an accent. <laughs> I swear um, I hear. I am mixed. I'm like, I'm I'm like is, <laughs> is your mama white? Well, who's, who's No, no, immigrant? both my parents are from Philly. Both my parents are black. They are mixed. Okay. Um, you know, I was raised in the South. I might get a little bit of Southern in my accent because I grew up in, a lot of different that states. ain't a Phil. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, my parents they met in Philly, but you know, okay. we, you my dad, on? uh, my dad was in the military, so uh, we moved every four years, but I was in the south, I was in uh, Texas, Louisiana, um, okay. and right now I'm in Kelly, so oh, okay, okay. All right, brother. But um, I, I would say just we should see who's going to give us some tangibles. And if they're not going to give us no tangible, we're not going to rock with any of them. We um, abandon the process of voting for a presidential candidate. You, you leave it damaged and stagnant. You say we're not going to participate in that. And that would be the bigger threat when a large contingent of people are not participating in a system, um, they are delegitimizing the system. And then that puts the system in danger. We have to know how not voting is also a very powerful tactic. Heavy D, hop on, sir. Uh, 